Ooh, I finally got what I've been complaining about. Feels so good to get that D. Dragon, that is. Dragon. Hey, that's right. We're going to check out House of the Dragon, episode four. There will be some spoiler. Well, all spoilers ahead. So hang in there. We're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss a little bit. I'm going to point out some things. And uh, I'm going to straight up come out with it right now. It's the best episode of the season so far. And we got here. Took us long enough to get here. And I don't. It's weird because this episode, solely on its own, has so many payoffs and setups. And it's it's like we should have been having some of this built up through the previous part of the season, but we've been distracted by so many random things. And there's like a handful of random things here in the episode two that I'm going to try to address and see where we're going. I am not that familiar with the book. I've read Game of Thrones, the core books numerous times but i have not read house of the dragon so i don't know the difference but we're gonna go to an expert and take a look at his article from forbes eric kane my old friend here he writes for forbes has a youtube channel you should check him out he likes to write recaps <laughs> him and i uh we go way back all the way to um true detective i think is when i first discovered him so Let's take a look at what he has to say. We're going to do a little bit of recap, and then I'm going to give some analysis as we go through. Primarily, he's going to discuss the A-plot, where you have... Uh, and I'm going to try to skip some of the stuff that he does, but King Aegon is essentially feels like he's being usurped by everybody. He's sitting in the small council, and he doesn't realize that his brother and his hand have been conspiring to to do things they were everybody was headed to Harren Hall and the 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 riverlands and you have Damon who is in Harren Hall right now and there's a lot of weird stuff going on with him in there but as Matt Smith clearly hasn't realized yet the riverlands and Har Harren Hall is a waste of time and even the new Master of Whispers has realized it's a waste of time. So it's essentially a feint. They're pretending to go to Harren Hall, and then they're double-backing, and they're going to cut off Rhaenyra's forces by taking one of her small councils, uh, one of their castles. So that way she gets, you know, it, it, it strengthens their position in the mainland and cuts them off, even though it's very close it's right down the coast from both King's Landing and Dragonstone. If you remember, those two are very close to each other. And they could just fly down the coast a little bit, which we see in the show. So they're keeping, they're paying attention to geography. I like that. I like that about this one. I think it's good. So they're going to take Rook's Nest, and that's the A plot. And uh, it's been interesting there, right? So Aegon gets all, or Amon gets all pissed off. No, Aegon. There's so many people with the same name here. But uh, the king, I'm going to start naming them things. Like, Amon is going to be One-Eyed Pete. And then Sir Kristen Cole is going to be Caesar. King Caesar. Because he has a Caesar haircut. Aegon's going to be fresh and toasty. <laughs> king Toasty Oats. How's that sound? Anyway, he gets all pissed talks to his mom and his mom's like you've got people who have more battle experience and are more wise than you you should listen to them and he's like i don't like none of that give me a drink so he gets a drink on and he goes i'ma handle this myself so he goes and jumps on his dragon sunfire and he goes drunk <laughs> drunk dragon driving which is something i don't think we've ever seen that before which I enjoy. I enjoy. I don't enjoy drunk driving. I don't recommend it. But I do enjoy drunk dragon driving. So as uh, Rhaenyra finally shows up, and she's like, "Hey, I was at King's Landing, and I accomplished nothing. But I know there's going to be all out war." And and they find out that Rook's Nest is about to be assaulted. So she's going to send herself and go protect it. Well, in the meantime, old lady who's the princess, another Rainies, whatever, 
<laughs> she's like, I'm going with my dragon, Melee's, the Red Queen. I, I can't keep track of the names of the or the dragons, but I have a I have an idea of what's going on here. So old lady is gonna go into this. Now, the one one thing I want to pick apart about the plot, just just a tiny bit, is there's a big deal about Renair Rainy, the old lady goes to see the sea snake at his ship and she finds the guy who pulled him out of the water and it i I guess they're saying it's his bastard because she's like you look super hot you clearly must be a bastard right she doesn't call him a bastard but that's that's the implication so there's some bastards running around technical bastards but they don't connect it to anything so maybe it'll pay off in the future I, i again i don't know I don't mind them introducing this one in that way because he's been dropped in the series several times. They've been like, hey, this guy saved saved his lord. Hey, he saved his lord. He want, The lord wants to repay him. And he's like, I don't need any repayment. Whereas the other dude last episode that I was complaining about who claims he's a bastard who who goes in the in the bar and he's wailing about being a bastard. I, whatever, man. I just, it just doesn't, you know... I, I don't see where I, I I guess it'll connect. Who knows? Again, those who've read the book will know, and and you can criticize me if you like. I, I'm okay with that. So Cole is working with Hightower, and he's like, "Yeah, I, yo, I didn't invite the king here, you dummy, you big dummy." And then it becomes an all-out dragon brawl, and that is glo- glorious. <coughs> lots of Drakaris. Lots of Valerian in this, too. That's right. They did have a nice pickup, too, where One-Eyed Pete is speaking Valerius to the king, and the king doesn't... He knows Valerius, or, or Valerian, High Valerian, the language they speak. I do have another criticism there. Why is the subtitle so small? It's tiny. And I, I, you know, I would like it a little bit bigger. So anyway... And, and it, it was very amusing that he knew, because if you remember when he was a kid, he shirked his studies, so he doesn't know High Valerian that well. And his brother does, and he's making fun of his brother, essentially. And his brother's like, we should um, er, uh, go to war. It's great. I, I thought that was a really subtle, well-written point. I liked it. That's why this episode in particular was well-written, well-set up. All that stuff was really good. Really enjoyed it. So all the... You had glorious dragon fighting. And, uh, yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. And we'll see what happens. Uh, Kane here wants to discuss the spoilers from the book, but I, I'm not going to do that. He also wants to point out, Damon is stuck in Hall, and I think that's kind of funny. And that witch, why would you drink anything from the witch? We got another appearance from uh, Young Hotness. So her royal Young Hotness came back in and got her head chopped off. It was terrible CGI. But uh, yeah, whatever. It's cool. Oh, I did really, I thought this was a weird point. In the beginning, I was starting to think like, oh, is this episode going to be a slog? Uh, King Caesar, Sir Cole, he ends up lopping off some dude's head. Didn't know who that was. Sorry, folks, but they're not doing a great job of turning that over, right? And <laughs> and uh, so this I did not know. This is great. This is great catch by Kane. He goes, Damon means Oscar Tully, who is the grandson of Grover Tully, and then there's an Elmo Tully. Really, there can't there can't be another Elmo. Really, he claims it's real. I don't know, but George R. R. Martin, he's saying he threw that in there. Really weird. And he keeps speaking to this witch, and I don't know what her her whole her point is. Go, I don't know. That whole Harren Hall thing is very weird. But I do like Damon kind of treating with his demons, and you you finally get motivations. So one thing I was a little I'm, I've been a little disappointed with in general is the motivations of all the characters. And they're starting to spill them out a little bit. But you don't have anybody who you know wants to be rich or just wants to have the throne because they want power. It's, it you know, 
<clears throat> Rhaenyra's is like, oh, my dad told me about the Song of Ice and Fire, and we have to protect the whole realm, and that's what I'm going to do. And then everybody else is like, yeah, well, I heard a story too, and I, I don't know what it means, but it means my kid needs to be on the throne. I need to sacrifice. By the way, Allison, naughty girl, did you send your, you sent, you sent King Caesar, Sir Cole, away because you were prego waffles? And then she leaves out the evidence for the Master of Whispers to see. Like, what are you doing? Master of Whispers is all over. He's like, yeah, I see what you did there. I see what you did. And then Renair's going to tell Jace, JC, I don't know who, I know who he is, but he gets to know about the Song of Ice and Fire. Okie dokie. Sure, he talks about the, yep, Al, Allison has a uh, one of those things, yep. <laughs> Sir Christian Cole is genuinely talented. <laughs> this is kind of funny. It's with the most grudging, most grudging respect, I must admit, that Cole is a vile human being in about just every way, but he's clearly more capable when it comes to leading men in battle. I agree with you. What a great, that's a great take. That is a hot take. I think that's part of it, too, is who you're rooting for at this point. Everybody kind of sucks. So I'm not really rooting for anybody. Like, there's no winners in this one. At least in the original Game of Thrones, there were pieces here and there where you could clearly say, I want this person to win or this person, and everybody's rooting for Jon Snow, right? So who knows? Very strange, but a very good episode. In my opinion, I enjoyed it. I hope you did. I'm going to keep chugging along here as we go through it, but good stuff. I'll take it. I think it's a win. I think it was better written. I like the payoffs and setups within the episode. I like the payoffs and setups from season one, especially with the king, you know, not having the skill to do anything, really. He just became king because it could. <clears throat> I don't know where all the bastards fit in. Maybe they, they are they trying to set up another battle of the bastards? I hope not, because that was disappointing. Was was pointed out there. What do you guys think? Are you excited? Are you uh, disappointed? Was my criticism valid from the rest of this earlier part in the season? Check out the older videos to find out what you think or what I think. And uh, bring it on. Let's go. Let's have a nice dialogue. Let's not have a rude one. I've been called Manny a name, and I will take them all. But it's okay because, you know, you can always listen to the full-length audio podcast on Friday nights. That's right. It's on iTunes. It's uh, here on YouTube. We live stream Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a good time had by all. You can also uh, like and subscribe because I would greatly appreciate that. But uh, thank you very much. But I'm on to the next one.